Before we get started, I want to thank everyone who took the time to listen to Chapter 1. Applying Levels, we cannot grow without you. I love and appreciate you all. Chapter 2, Energy. When you hear this sound, it's time to pay extra attention. My mother always said, show me who you hang out with and you'll show me who you are. I grew up with analogies and riddles to answer most of my questions. I would have hoped that they came with explanations that would have worked out better than breaking my head for years. <laughs> I just posted something suggesting that people you hang around with should be more advanced than you. But you should never feel intimidated when confronted by someone whose energy is stronger than yours. I always disagreed with my mother because her vision lacked further discussion. The problem with her statement is that she really didn't know who I was hanging out with. Well, at least I thought I did. Your environment becomes who you surround yourself with. Energy is very contagious, and it can move from host to host very quickly. You must choose who you share or borrow energy from carefully. So what constitutes energy? It's the combination of force, sense of urgency, and attitude which allows us to coexist with others. When surrounded by energy that doesn't suit you, it would feel uncomfortable. Whether we work well with others or not depends on the level of energy they demonstrate on a consistent basis. Chapter 1 introduced levels for balance, which taught us that you cannot live a positive life with a negative mind. You can feel an attraction when you are sharing space with someone who has similar energy. Energy is magnetic and should match your own as close as possible. If you have mastered applying levels of energy, you will not match well with someone who only has potential. When you encounter people who are on the same level, you will feel an immediate connection and sometimes a sense of euphoria. We waste a lot of time and energy on things that don't deserve it. One of our greatest downfalls is expecting people to think and feel as deeply as we do. You can understand them, but it doesn't mean they understand you. In order to apply energy effectively, you must know yourself first. You have to come to terms with what you are willing or not willing to do. You must understand what moves you as well as in what direction it will take you. In order to use your energy correctly, it takes allowing yourself to be around diverse groups and individuals. You need to identify with mixed vibes, which can be enlightening, but only if you share the same energy. By segregating yourself to limited culture, you become part of something that is chosen for you. Energy is founded by the choices one makes and with whom they are shared with. If shared with the wrong recipient, they can strip you of your entire energy storage until there is nothing left. Basically, you need to know who you are unleashing your energy to and who you are receiving it from. You can literally steal someone's energy. I personally look at it as borrowing and paying it forward. So it's more like an exchange. In order to avoid toxicities trying to sneak in, you must be careful from who and what you are absorbing energy from. We must practice scanning energy through our personal firewall. We absorb energy every time we meet with someone. However, it doesn't have to be in person. A phone conversation can easily influence somebody's energy. So presence is not necessary but both can be easily dismissed and walked away from, especially if you can detect negative intentions early. Have you ever felt the heebie-jeebies? <laughs> it means something around you isn't right. Walk away, run for the hills. Do not ignore the signs that can warn you of energy that is not conducive to your personal level. Energy is hard to explain because your energy belongs to you. It comes from your spiritual sense, inner core, emotional intelligence, and your life experiences. When it comes to God, I have personally witnessed countless miracles for myself and many who are close to me. These supernatural experiences could not have come from any other source. I am not a religious person, but I do believe in a higher power, one that seems to protect you from committing any wrongdoing and placing you in unfortunate situations. You are aligned with this power because you live a righteous life or someone is actively praying for you. This energy comes to protect you when someone wishes you bad. 
Karma will play its role and create a backlash of negative events towards your haters. I can and will share more details about these experiences in future podcast segments. Pay attention to the spiritual God winks presented to you and let's live above the norm. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tickle the bell icon to help our community grow. Be among the first to know when we have new videos and where to go for free stuff. We can identify the intentions of other people's energy towards you just by listening to what they are saying. Allow your energy to work for you and it will show you the signs. Energy has a lot to do with communication and is needed way before the start of any relationship. For instance, if you are already thinking about what to respond as someone is talking, then you are not truly paying attention and listening. By doing this, you are selfishly eliminating any opportunity for them to express themselves. For example, if it requires problem solving, you could be missing vital information that could be relevant. In some cases, it requires you to be a devoted listener. Nevertheless, we must let people speak. If they are not ready to have the floor and their thoughts are not in order, they will eventually trip over their own tongue. Listening can also encourage one to hear their own words and allow him or her to solve their own issues. For the most part, all you have to do is nod your head and agree. You do not have to offer a solution to every problem. If you refrain from talking and actually pay attention, you can easily decipher what information is good and what is unnecessary. All bad energy cannot be avoided. Some of it must be absorbed, and some should be deflected. With courage and practice, we can easily identify negative energy from the beginning. Instead of waiting for it to become overwhelming, it can be nipped in the bud at the first sign of discomfort. This is part of practicing using the right energy or level of effort for any situation at hand. This is living above the norm. The philosophy behind the law of attraction suggests that positive thoughts encourage positive results while negative thoughts bring negative conclusions. Do you wonder why sometimes it seems no one is attracted to you or lately no one is showing you love? For starters, your energy level has created a force field and is not letting anyone in. People can feel this negativity and perceive this as a no entry zone, which will cause them to back away instantly. After all, who wants to be invited into a toxic situation? Instead of working on positive energy, some people tend to find ways to disguise their real agenda and trick you into engaging with them. Once they have our attention or interests, they bombard us with their complaints and misfortunes. This is not flushing the toilet. This is selfishly unloading their issues and anxieties towards someone else. Here are some effective steps which can help the laws of attraction work for you. Number one. You must know what you truly want and what it takes to get it. If you don't know what you want, then who will? Do you really want other people deciding this for you? Number two, you must appreciate and reciprocate positive actions. Give back to those that give to you and keep the positivity going. Number three, take a mini break from talking to people and talk to yourself. It's better to adjust to their absence than to be frustrated by their presence. Tell yourself what to do. Listen to yourself. Do not look for ways to discredit your positivity. No more ifs, maybes, or I can't do it. Number four, be clear and honest about your intentions. Give people the option to walk away if they are not ready or willing to deal with your BS. And don't get upset if they do. Number five, you have to visualize success if you ever want to experience it. If the future picture is not clear, your future will always be cloudy. Place a picture near your bed or whatever you want so the first thing you see starting your morning is what you desire. Number six, you must take accountability for your own BS. Be responsible for what you say and do. Stop blaming everyone else. Own up to your wrongdoings and any chaos you may have caused. Learn to apologize without any if, ands, or buts. Be sorry and discuss a plan to avoid this in the future. Let them know you are aware, working towards change, and you appreciate their patience. Number seven, 
One of the most important things to remember is to confront your anger before you confront those who angered you. The people who intentionally get you upset are hoping that you react contentiously. Shock them with a positive vibe. They won't know how to handle it nor what to do next. Maintaining your own energy and unaffected by others' negativity becomes a superpower. Your energy is your currency. Stop allowing people to use your energy in exchange for nothing. You are the landlord of your thoughts. Do not rent space to just anyone. Don't be afraid to claim you have no time or room for negativity. If the way you move, grind, and hustle intimidates people, then you're doing something right. Don't let them discourage you. Their job is to challenge you because they can't do it themselves. So why would they want you to succeed? Did you know that it's therapeutic when you vibe with someone that has the same goofy energy as you do? The people in your life should not use your past to punish you. It should be used to understand how to love you. At the end of the day, the most attractive thing to me is your level of effort. Someone who really wants to make me a part of their life by talking to me, wants to see me, and shows positive actions towards me. You can literally feel when it's time to move on to the next chapter in your life. After all, wasn't it you who implanted that seed in your head in the first place? Think about that. Before I go, I want to challenge all of you to tell me something that you cannot change from negative to positive. I dare you to try and challenge me on this. Let's continue to grow together and remember to live above the norm. The word for this podcast is contentious, which is actions or words that are likely to provoke an argument or controversy and in law relating to or involving differences between contending parties.